The Gamma Scout GS2 is a device to measure alpha, beta and gamma radiation. The normal operating mode is the radiation measurement in the unit's microwatt pro hour and the measured values are constantly saved so that you can do a long-term analysis. I can, for example, read the last value from the day before 0.127 micro C watt pro hour was the average yesterday. As I became the device, I could measure a lower value. That was because with the pose there was a smaller radiation and here in the room probably a higher radon burden. The device does not have a turn off switch but a fixed soldered lithium battery which lasts 3 years because the electricity consumption is only 10 microamps. You can switch a window at the front. Now we have pure gamma radiation set with alpha beta gamma. I open the window and then I can see the scope and the mi micro window. That is sensitive, you can easily break it. That is why it's better to set in normal case gamma radiation. Then I have an aluminium filter plate in front of it, which shields alpha and beta. And now when, when I want to measure beta and alpha, there's a thinner filter plate in front of it. When I want to examine probes, then I work at the best in the setting alpha, beta, gamma and with the open scope. There are different measuring types. I can, for example, use a device as a normal Geiger counter as an impulse counter. Then I can see here, as usual, every single impulse as a count. and can then, for example, do a long-term measurement on a probe. I have to push twice. I can do a long-term measurement and examine what I want to measure. The time I can set here. I can, for example, start the measurement with one hour and it stops automatically and I have a fixed value. What I find very practical is the CPS mode, count per second. An average is continually determined. That means I become determined values. At the beginning you have large differences because the statistical average of the radiation event means that short measuring times don't bring much. But after a few minutes, I become an average with which I can do something with. It is here at around 0.33 impulse per second. That means I have a naught rate of around 20 impulses per minute, roughly speaking. I reckon that after 5 minutes I have a usable middle value, which is around 0.3. At the moment I am coincidentally a little higher. It'll go down and up a few times. That makes the possibility to examine probes and use a just long measuring time. I can, for example, examine this potash that is a potassium carbonate and potassium is a bad weather radiator. 
in health food stores you become these self-raising bing powders and with this you can examine the functions of a counter when it is weather sensitive I stand it simply here at the front with the window open so that the weather radiation is not dispersed and start my measurements new now I have to wait a moment it goes straight away from a measurement from earlier I have a measurement of 0 0.5 that means 0 0.5 impulses per second that means also 30 impulses per minute that means around 10 impulse per minute go back to this probe there are also fluctuations the measurement stabilizes at an average and then I have it exacter. If I want an exact measurement then I simply have to measure longer. But also to determine the knot rate and that shows that you have to watch the place where it's measured. I think it makes a difference if it has just been aired here or not because the radon pollution varies. The device saves automatically all measurements in an adjustable phase. For example, hourly or minute by minute. And I can also, over a USB interface, get the measured values to my computer and evaluate them. That means I can do very good long term measurements on different places. For example, for a question. Is in the cellar higher because there is a higher concentration of radon? Or does it make a difference if a room is aired good or badly aired? Such measurements are possible without problems because... Because I can take a determined time lapse of 24 hours. And then I have exact values to see smaller variations. So I can see here after a short time a middle value of 0 0.421 impulse per second and that is definitely more than 0 0.33 which I have as an average as an idle measurement to say that this probe radiates some if we work with other probes here is for example a little pearl made out of uranium glass something like this is still legal and not dangerous there's only a small amount of natural uranium melt into it when I hold this in front here then I become a larger, larger radiation alpha, beta and gamma and after a short time I should become larger values which are significant at the moment I cannot see that but that is the statistic by all radiation measurements it takes a while When I have measured a stronger radiating probe, for example a glow sock from a petrol lamp, a piece of natural uranium, then you have to remember that the device has to recover. This is because decaying products collect in the scope and these decaying products have their own disintegration time and when they are first gone I then become my naught rate I am astonished how low this glass pearl radiates it is not so much more than the potassium anyway
After this measurement to do a not measurement, I would have to leave the device in idle mode so that the not rate is correct. All in all, a very nice device with which the measuring is made easy.